Time for another five minute ish review. Bloodstone Subspecies 2 from 1993. Picking up right after the conclusion of the first film, which means I can't tell you much about the plot because that would spoil both films, but Anders Hove returns as the venomous Radu and Denise Duff takes over the role of Michelle. Michelle, now dealing with her slow transformation into a vampire, tries to escape from Radu by traveling to Bucharest with the Bloodstone and contacts her sister in the States, Rebecca, played by Melanie Shatner. Yes, the daughter of William Shatner. Becky arrives in Romania, but Michelle has disappeared. She, along with police lieutenant Marin and an embassy agent named Mel, the, and a professor that initially set up the girl's research program, she tries to track down her sister and discover the origin of the bloodstone, which is now in their possession. Meanwhile, Michelle is fighting her urge for blood while Radu seeks out his mummy for help. The evil sorceress demands he recover the bloodstone and destroy Michelle. Radu wants to conquer his fledgling and resumes his search, eventually regaining the Bloodstone and recapturing Michelle. No more can safely be said without revealing the ending and giving some major hints at the beginning of the third film, which was filmed back-to-back -back with the second. As I said in my review of 1991's Subspecies, I find this film to be the better of the two. Ted Nicolaou returns as director, and feeling a little more comfortable in the story and locations stretches his creative wings a little. This film has a much smaller cast to contend with, having left the villagers behind for the beautiful setting of the city of Bucharest. This gives them a little more of the budget to hone the makeup and prosthetics of Radu and create his mother, the rotting form of Mummy. Light and shadows are played for great effect in this film. Rado needs to travel far and quickly, and with no budget for strange vampiric transformations or to have Anders Hove strapped to wires and flying through the air, they use tricks of in-camera shadow play, a visual element I am truly impressed by. Should I ever find myself needing to film a creature of the night getting from one place to another, this is how I'm doing it. It has to be said that there is at least one animated shadow effect that doesn't hold up or look as nice as the in-camera ones. It is only used to sort of set up this mode of transportation. Under the cir circumstances and considering the era of filming, I'll let it slide. The cast change is not addressed within the film. The appearance of Denise Duff is very different than her predecessor, Laura Tate. An argument could be made that it is due to her rebirth after her attack by Radu and Stavon's attempt at saving her, but there is no mention or acknowledgement of any difference in her appearance by her sister. So I think we are just to pretend that Michelle has always looked the way she does in this film. Wave of the hand and move along, the mantra of any indie filmmaker doing the best with what they have. As much as I liked Tate's performance in the first film, I'm not sorry that Duff takes over. She's a great actress and does a masterful job at conveying the turmoil within her as she deals with her cravings and urges. Michelle's desire to return to her old life, but knowing that that is no longer an option, and realizing that she has to push away those who love her most in order to try and save them from not only Radu, but herself, is done less with script and more with Duff's looks of anguish and despair. It also doesn't hurt that while Laura Tate was beautiful, Denise Duff is gorgeous. Her looks far better suit the role of a reluctant undead and the object of a bloodthirsty vampire's desire. While the cast is limited to just our main players, the quartet of protagonists is a bit large in my opinion. The embassy agent, uh, Mal, is the young handsome man that provides the will they won't they between he and Becky. Either the absent-minded professor or the comic relief police lieutenant could easily be dropped. I think the professor makes some more amount of sense in keeping with vampire stories in general, so maybe the lieutenant could have been merged with the embassy agent if they really wanted some potential love interest, and then we'd be down at least one extraneous character. No matter what, I think keeping the sister would be a must. I really like her being there and being the one that is trying to save her sister even when all seems lost. Anyone else would have given up on Michelle once the truth is known, and even switched to trying to destroy her, but not her sister. Also, it gives Michelle a reason to keep fight, trying to fight Radu and not give in to the bloodlust. 
In fact, it is integral to the conclusion of this film and to the plot of the next. But that is another review. As always, I'd love to know what you think of Bloodstone Subspecies 2, the Subspecies franchise, or even Full Moon and Charles Band in general. Follow the link in the show notes to find out how to contact me and share your thoughts. Thanks for listening.